Definitions and Terminology, Level 3. In this video, we're going to continue classifying ordinary differential equations by order and linearity. Let's jump straight into the first example. Sine of theta times y triple prime minus cosine of theta times y prime equals 2, where y is a function of theta. Alright, notice that this differential equation is written using prime notation. We are also told that y is a function of theta. This means that the dependent variable is y and the independent variable is theta. Remember that the first step in classifying a differential equation is to identify the dependent and independent variable. We can also rewrite this differential equation using Leibniz notation as follows. All right, let's first classify the order of this ODE. Notice that this ODE contains two derivatives, a third derivative and a first derivative. The highest of these two is a third derivative. This means that we can classify this ODE as a third order ODE. Now let's classify the linearity of the ODE. We first need to make sure that the dependent variable and its derivatives are linear in form, meaning they are raised to the power of 1. Inspecting the derivatives, we see that both derivatives are raised to the power of 1. Next, we need to make sure that the products of the dependent variable and its derivatives are solely expressed in terms of the independent variable. Once again, inspecting the products, we see that they are indeed written in terms of the independent variable. Notice that these expressions are also transcendental functions, specifically trigonometric functions. Recall that the third step was to make sure that transcendental functions are also solely written in terms of the independent variable. Notice that this is the case. All transcendental functions are written in terms of the independent variable. Since all three requirements check out, we can classify the linearity of this ODE as linear. So this equation can be classified as a third order linear ODE. Let's move along to the next example. 3x squared times y double prime plus 2 times the natural log of x times y prime plus e to the x times y equals 3 times cosine of x where y is a function of x. All right, we have another differential equation written in prime notation. We're also told that y is a function of x. This means that the independent variable is x and a dependent variable is y. We can also rewrite this ODE using Leibniz notation as follows. All right, let's classify the order of the ODE. Notice that we have two derivatives, a second derivative and a first derivative. The highest of these two is a second derivative. This means that this ODE is a second order ODE. Now let's check to see if this ODE is linear. Inspecting the second and first derivative, we see that both derivatives are raised to the power of 1. In addition, the dependent variable y is also raised to the power of 1. Next, let's check the products of the dependent variable and its derivatives, and make sure they are written only in terms of the independent variable. In this case, we have 3x squared, 2 times the natural log of x, and e to the x. All three expressions are written in terms of x. The final thing to check is to make sure that any transcendental functions are also written in terms of the independent variable x. Notice that this ODE contains three transcendental functions. We already checked the natural log and exponential function. Now we need to make sure that the trigonometric function is written solely in terms of x. Inspecting the function, we see that this is the case. All three requirements are met, so we can classify this ODE as a linear ODE. In the end, this equation can be classified as a second order linear ODE. All right, let's try a third example. The second derivative of y with respect to t plus sine of t plus y equals sine of t. Here we have an ODE written using Leibniz notation. With this notation, we can explicitly see that the dependent variable is y and the independent variable is t. Since we have time as an independent variable, we can rewrite this ODE by using Newton's dot notation as follows. All right, let's first identify the order of the ODE. Notice that we only have one derivative, and it's a second derivative. Since this is the only derivative, we can classify this ODE as second order. Now let's check to see if this ODE is linear. Inspecting the derivative, we see that it's raised to the power of 1. Also notice that this derivative contains no products, 
so we can skip this step. The final step is to make sure that any transcendental functions are only written in terms of the independent variable. Notice that the sine function on the right side of the equation is written in terms of the independent variable t, but the sine function on the left side of the equation contains a dependent variable y inside its argument. This automatically makes this ODE nonlinear. In the end, this equation can be classified as a second order nonlinear ODE. Alright, let's move along to the next example. The second derivative of r with respect to t equals negative k over r squared, where k is a constant. Here we have an ODE written using Leibniz notation. The independent variable is t, and a dependent variable is r. With time as the independent variable, we can rewrite this ODE using Newton's dot notation as follows. Also notice that this ODE contains no actual numbers. These types of ODEs might be confusing at first. Just keep in mind which letters represent variables and which letters represent constants. In this case, the letter k represents a constant. Alright, let's start by classifying the order of this ODE. Like in the previous example, this ODE contains only one derivative. In this case, it's a second derivative. Since this is the only derivative in the equation, this ODE can be classified as a second order ODE. Now let's check if this ODE is linear. Inspecting the dependent variable r and its derivative, we see that the second derivative is raised to the power of 1. But the dependent variable on the right side of the equation is actually being raised to the power of negative 2. This automatically makes this ODE nonlinear. So this ODE can be classified as a second order nonlinear ODE. Alright, let's try the next example. m times the first derivative of v with respect to t equals mg minus kv squared, where m, g, and k are constants. Once again, we have an ODE written in Leibniz notation. Here, we have the dependent variable represented by the variable v, and the independent variable represented by the variable t. In addition, we're also told that the letters m, g, and k are constants. We can also rewrite this ODE by using Newton's dot notation as follows. All right, let's first identify the order of the ODE. Notice that this ODE only contains one derivative, in this case, a first derivative. Since this is the only derivative, this ODE can be classified as a first order ODE. Next, we need to check if this ODE is linear. So we first inspect the dependent variable and its derivatives, and make sure they are raised to the power of 1. The derivative on the left side is raised to the power of 1, but the dependent variable v is raised to the power of 2. This automatically makes this ODE nonlinear. In the end, this ODE can be classified as a first order nonlinear ODE. Alright, let's go over the final example. L times the second derivative of q with respect to t plus r times the first derivative of q with respect to t plus 1 over c times q equals e as a function of t, where l, r, and c are constants. This ODE is written using Leibniz notation. Looking at the ODE, we determine that the dependent variable is q and the independent variable is t. In addition, we are also told that the letters l, r, and c are constants. Notice that we can also rewrite this ODE by using Newton's dot notation as follows. Like always, let's first classify the order of the ODE. This ODE contains two derivatives, a second and first derivative. The highest of these two is a second derivative, so this ODE can be classified as a second order ODE. Now let's classify the linearity of the ODE. Let's start by inspecting the dependent variable and its derivatives, and make sure they are raised to the power of 1. Looking at the dependent variable and its derivatives, we see that they are all raised to the power of 1. Now let's check the products of these expressions. Notice that they are all being multiplied by constants, so technically they are not being multiplied by an expression in terms of the dependent variable q. Lastly, we want to make sure that any transcendental functions are written only in terms of the independent variable t. Notice that the right side of the ODE contains the function e, that is written in terms of the independent variable t. Although we don't know the exact relationship of this function, we do know that it's written in terms of t. This is sufficient to classify this ODE as a linear ODE. 
If this function were to be expressed in terms of q, or in terms of t and q, then this ODE would have been classified as a nonlinear ODE, because the function e would have contained the dependent variable q. Alright, in our next video, we are going to practice classifying partial differential equations, also known as PDEs.